Let us gather ourselves into Christ's presence with a moment of silence. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is with you. Let us pray. Unseen God, drawing all people to the end of our desires, teach us to know true bread from false and to feed on him who shares our flesh, Jesus Christ, our communion. Amen. The first reading is from 1 Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a, a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life for I am no better than my ancestors. And he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food. Forty days and forty nights to Mount Horeb, the Mount of God. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the portion of Psalm 34 responsively. I will bless the Lord at all times, I will glory in the Lord. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. I sought the Lord and he answered me. 
Look upon him and be radiant. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. beautiful reading from Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them work and labor honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to our God. Do hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, the church. the Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. 
and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of our Savior. Morning. If you don't know me already, um, I'm the Reverend Dr. Teresa Danley. I'm the statewide champions organizer for Missouri Jobs with Justice and volunteer missioner for public advocacy for the Episcopal Diocese of Missouri. And long ago, I was raised up for ordination from this very place. I'm very glad to be at the cathedral with you this morning. I am very glad to share in the breaking of bread and in the prayers, especially in the midst of such a difficult and poignant week in our region, with the commemorations 10 years after Michael Brown Jr. was slain on August 9th, 2014, and after the very expensive, divisive primary on August 6th, with both candidates claiming the Ferguson uprising as their heritage. Indeed, as we heard in Ephesians 4, and unfortunately, as we're probably going to hear through the general election, whew, there's a lot of bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, slander, malice, and we're probably going to have some more. Lord, help us. I am glad to be here because I don't know about you, but I need to be fed today, fed by Jesus, reminded that Jesus is our bread of life come down from heaven, that in Jesus is our salvation. And I'm going to start with a story by Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and I will share it around, starting with our youngest members in a minute. Archbishop Desmond Tutu wrote the stories in the Children of God Storybook Bible and this is his version of John 6, which we've been hearing from for a few weeks and will hear from for a few more weeks. All day in the hot sun, thousands of people sat and listened to Jesus talk about God's dream. They were so hungry to know God, they forgot to eat lunch. When the sun started to go down, Philip said, Master, it's late and the people are hungry. You should send them home. Why send them home, said Jesus, just feed them. Feed them, Philip said, we don't have any food. Someone has something to share, Jesus answered. A little boy offered to share his five small loaves and two tiny fish. Philip threw up his hands in the air. That's not enough for all these people. Ask the people to sit down, Jesus said. He took the bread in his hands, looked up to heaven, and blessed it. He did the same with the fish, and then he told his disciples to hand out the food. They were amazed. There was more than enough for everyone. When all the people had finished eating, the disciples filled 12 baskets with the food that was left over. With God's love, five, lo five loaves and two small fish fed more than 5,000 people. And the story continues. 
The story concludes, dear God, help me to share so there will be enough for everyone. Dear God, help me to share so there will be enough for everyone. And you're welcome to look at this book throughout the service. Just please, it belongs to my children. So I need it back by the end of the service. And you're welcome to look at all the beautiful art made by many different artists. Would you like to start? When you pass it around when you're done, you can look at all the stories in it if you want, okay? Dear God, help me to share so there will be enough for everyone. Jesus' feeding of the 5,000 plus in John 6 was one of his miraculous signs of abundance in John, right? It was an action that pointed to Jesus' identity as God's son, as the provider and sustainer of abundant life. Abundance was a sign of the reign of God, of the kingdom of God breaking into daily life on earth. Yet, if that unnamed little boy had not boldly offered to share his small lunch, probably, I might add, a lunch packed and sent along by his wise mother, when the disciples went frantically asking throughout the crowd, the miraculous sign of abundance would not have happened at all. God, through Jesus, helped the little boy to share so that there was more than enough for everyone. Indeed, so much that everyone ate until they were satisfied and 12 baskets were collected. Theologian Debbie Thomas asks us to quote, consider how many of the Jesus stories we love center around meals and feasts and dinner tables. When Jesus fed the 5,000, he did more than fill their stomachs. He encourages hungry, needy, weary people to sit down together, to notice and attend to one another, to take pleasure not only in the possibility of their own fullness, but in the fullness of the whole. Thomas continues, the point is not to hoard, scheme, conserve, or quantify. The point is to enjoy abundance in community, to learn that in God's kingdom, there is enough. Not just enough for one, but enough for many. Not just enough for me or for my family, but enough for absolutely everyone. Enough to spare, end quote. Dear God, help me to share so there will be enough for everyone. Now, these five weeks from the Bread of Life discourse get all mixed up, right? The verses go here and there. So, in John 6, after the miraculous sign... Despite their experience of enjoying great abundance in community, many in the crowd wanted to make Jesus their king, their temporal king, assuming that he would literally be able to keep feeding them. Having had a taste of some, they wanted more. It's a very normal human inclination. They feared not having enough. And in today's passage, Jesus tried to explain that the bread, the nourishment that he offered and offers us still, surpasses the daily bread required for daily sustenance, even though we need that too. Unlike the loaves and the fishes, unlike the manna that God offered the Israelites in the wilderness, unlike even the cakes that fed Elijah for 40 days, Jesus himself is the bread. Jesus, using an I am statement, just as God his father did with Moses at the burning bush, declared, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread of life that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. According to theologian Peter Claver Ager, quote, by comparing himself to bread, Jesus makes himself as necessary to us as the food we eat. 
He is our food, enabling us to live our life's call, enabling us to be alive, our source of spiritual energy when exhausted, our consolation when we are troubled, our strength when we are weak. Jesus, the bread of life, sustains us and restores our vigor and our exhausted energies. Boy, do I need to hear that this week. Our search for material bread continues, says Ajer. The desire for more increases even as we have a lot of bread. The present bread does not fulfill our hunger or quench our thirst, but that which Jesus gives does, end quote. Do you know that in the books of the Acts of the Apostles, it is recorded that the first Christians actually seemed to enjoy abundance and community in a truly radical way? For a brief time, trusting in Jesus to fulfill all hunger and thirst? Christians did it for a little while. In Acts chapter 2, 43 to 47, awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. What if, what if, my friends, what if we, even we, Christians in the U.S., chose not to hoard or scheme or conserve or quantify What if we realize truly and deeply in our hearts and souls against all reason that we had enough to share because Jesus is the bread of life? What if, and I'm using what theologians and preachers in the black church call the sanctified imagination here. What if, what if we here, even just in the Episcopal Diocese of Missouri, chose to enjoy abundance and community in a way that completely flouted the rational logic of economic theory? What if we intentionally, prayerfully, irrationally, collectively chose to act as exuberantly and irrationally as that little boy did when he shared his lunch with an abiding sense of abundance and life-giving courage? What if? Could we eliminate food insecurity and homelessness in eastern Missouri? I think we could. God, through Jesus, would provide us with more than enough. We, with God's help, could share so there would be more than enough. Loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves is work that requires discipline. Discipline that most of us lack that I lack for sure, right? Because it requires us to trust Jesus in a way that most of us find really hard, that most of us find drowned out by all that is in the world around us. It requires the discipline of daily prayer and action It requires being nourished by Jesus, the bread of life, every day and trusting in his promises so deeply and so completely that we can let go of fear, fear of scarcity, fear of lack, fear of not having what others have, fear of being made foolish. But Jesus promised, as we hear in him, Three, three, five. I am the bread of life. They who come to me shall not hunger. They who believe in me shall not thirst. No one shall come to me unless the Father draw them, and I will raise them up on the last day. D. 
here, God, help me to share so there will be enough for everyone. And to close, as we heard in Ephesians 4, and as we hear in the offertory sentence, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven us. Let us be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Let us proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray especially for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop, Sean, Presiding Bishop-elect, Dion, our Bishop, Kathy, our Dean, and the staff and chapter of our cathedral. In our Diocese of Missouri, we pray for St. Timothy's Episcopal Church in Freeport. We pray for Megan, their rector, in, their, in our companion diocese of Puerto Rico. We pray for Santa Ana Mission in Sabana Grande, Emeritusa, their vicar. In the Anglican community, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, 
that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to the, your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially all the people of Israel, Palestine, and the Middle East, Ukraine, Russia, Sudan, Iran, Libya, the Pyron family, Julie, Tim, Karen, Jason, Jim, Jane, Laura, Tom, Josie, Floyd, Jody, Susan, Phil, Kathy, Norm, Jennifer, Brandon, Betty, all in prison and their families, and all those affected by violence and oppression in all forms. Give them courage and hope in your troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially the Reverend Wilson Nathaniel Pyron, all killed in the Middle East, all those lost to gun violence, especially those 95 lives taken by gun violence in St. Louis in 2024, represented in the light of the small candles on the high altar. All who die at the hand of another or by their own hand, we pray that your will for them may be fulfilled and that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot, cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you. Gracious God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and the power and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all this morning, and particularly welcome to anyone who's visiting today. We're so blessed to worship with you this morning. Please be here and be you and be loved. Communion is open to all. We will have two stations for communion, one here in the front center and one by the font towards the back. Please go to communion by the center aisle and return by the side aisle. 
If you require communion brought to you at your seats, please tell an usher. As always, there will be gluten-free bread available as well. <clears throat> um, the commission, I mean, the, uh, the missioners to prevent gun violence have um, an action request. The federal laws governing gun dealers are easily exploitable and tens of thousands of guns are trafficked across state lines every year because rogue dealers prioritize profits over safety. Many of these guns end up in the hands of criminals and domestic abusers. With the Senate introduction of the Federal Firearms Licensee Act, FFLA, our senators have an opportunity to act to hold the gun industry accountable. It strengthens gun safety laws like background checks and record keeping requirements and increases regulation and oversight, making bad actors accountable. You can make sure that gun dealers are doing their part to stop this deadly crisis by clicking the link in our weekly on the Christchurch Cathedral website to send a message urging your senators to co-sponsor the FFLA through voter voice. And that should be, whether you live in Missouri or Illinois, it should get sent to your, or any other state, it should get sent to your senators. Are there any other announcements? Well, to paraphrase Ephesians 4, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of all creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only child born of Mary to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By Christ's blood we are reconciled by Christ's means to your peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, eternal God, who have been redeemed by Jesus Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of our Savior Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Almighty God, 
through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has told us, taught us, we are bold to pray. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Behold what you are. These are God's holy gifts for you, God's holy people. So come to this table, you who have much faith, or you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here in a long time, come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here.
In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. God is with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, heavenly creator, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Our worship has ended. Our service in the world begins anew. Go in peace. Go in hope. Go in love to serve God's beloved people. 